Hi everyone, it's me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last six years. And today we are going to talk about all the wonderful things about living in the UK that no one ever talks about. Make sure to leave a comment down below on what is something that you love about living in the UK. But without further ado, let's go. Now we are going to Reddit today for this discussion. The question is, what is nice about living in the UK that nobody talks about? Our first one, I don't mind the weather at all. Not too hot most of the time, not too cold most of the time. I get it. I get what they're trying to say. I think I disagree, but just a little bit. Now talking about the weather in the UK, it's quite a generalization. There's a lot of different places in the UK. We do get similar weather, but not quite the same. So for me down here in the Southeast of Kent, I think our weather is probably the most desirable. We're the, you know, the most Southern um, winters, no snow really hardly at all. If we do get snow, it's like quite dramatic and everyone's really excited. As someone who comes from a very snowy winter country, AKA Canada, um, I don't miss the snow. So I'm happy that we don't get any snow. Sometimes we get nice summers, um, but they can be pretty miserable um, because you don't have air conditioning. Um, that's a separate topic. I do, I, I, think I, I think I agree. The temperature is like the weather, you know, it's kind of moderate. Yeah, all right, fair. Another thing that makes the UK great that no one ever talks about, did you guess tea? I talk about it constantly. We have every excuse to make a cup of tea. Have a guest in your house, tea. Guest in someone else's house, tea. Bad news, tea. Good news, tea. Afternoon, tea. Time to kill, seems rude not to, tea. You get the idea. On this channel, I do talk about tea quite often, just because as a foreigner, I feel like it is something that's interesting about British culture. A lot of Brits don't like tea, and I'm, I'm well aware. A lot of Brits are like, no thank you, coffee for me. Some don't like either, and fair play to you as well. I don't, so I, I, can't, I can't say that nobody ever talks about the tea element because I talk about it constantly, but there is something very comforting about a warm cup of tea. And I still haven't found a cuppa better than Yorkshire. Yorkshire, haven't found one better, but I'm still looking, just haven't found it yet. Next up, what about, well, we've got these things called nectar points. <laughs> you know what else is great? Food, food delivered to your door. Can you guys guess the sponsor of this video? Did you say hello fresh? Because you'd be right. I know, I can't believe it either. Now let's get to the point before everybody clicks off this video, I have a discount for you guys, Alana 50, okay? If you use the link in the description, you add Alana 50, you're gonna get 50% off your first box plus 35% off your next three boxes. Now two things real quick. I didn't know how much of my adult life would be spent trying to figure out what's for dinner, getting said ingredients, making said meal, and then doing it all over again. And to be honest, it's exhausting. I'm not that creative. And number two, if you've seen any of my cooking videos, you will know that I am not the most confident person in the kitchen. So cooking new recipes um, is a little bit scary because quite frankly, I don't know what I'm doing. Now HelloFresh helps me in both ways. Not only do they give me really interesting dinners and stuff that I've never had before or never even thought of before, it's all very exciting and it's new, which I absolutely love. On top of that, they also give you extremely detailed descriptions and recipe cards that have pictures, which let me tell you, very helpful. So I get to have wonderful meals that I don't have to think about and I get a little bit more confidence in the kitchen. Nice. So huge shout out to HelloFresh. I can't believe it, We've, we're here guys. We got a HelloFresh sponsorship. Can you believe it? Huge thank you to them. And again, if you wanna give it a try, use my link in the description, Alana50, you're gonna get a big discount. And I hope you have fun with the meals that you get to create. I know tonight we are having cheesy pork enchiladas. How exciting does that sound? All right, that's it for me. Let's get back to the video. On a more serious note, what about heavily regulated firearms control? Mass shootings are very rare as a result. And this 
as a Canadian is something that I really agree with. Now, I don't know the specific law differences and maybe people who have firearms could enlighten us in the comments, but from my personal opinion, the vibe towards guns in Canada in the UK is very similar. In Canada, I know people who have um, hunting rifles because they go hunting. Um, these are weapons that you take up north on a hunting trip. That's not too rare, I think, in Canada. I think most people may know the odd person that goes hunting, you know, maybe for deer. You go up north or whatever. Not my cup of tea. It's too cold and you sit around for hours doing nothing. I'm not that interested. But there are people who have those types of weapons. I don't know anybody else who has a non-hunting rifle weapon, if that makes sense. Over here in the UK, I think you guys are a bit more similar uh, in terms of there's like a hunting element. So more of like a sport or even like a, I don't wanna like food providing thing. But the people I know that hunt then use that food, you know, use it for food. What am I trying to say? Alana, take a minute, what are you trying to say? I think what I'm trying to say is that most people, of course not all, uh, in the UK and in Canada have similar thoughts about weapons, similar thoughts about guns, and for the most part it is like a hunting element. Whether you hunt for sport or you hunt and you actually use what you hunt for food, that's the, pe the people I know in Canada actually, you know, make food out of what they hunt. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. However, I do absolutely agree that one of the great things about the UK that is not talked about is that there are heavily regulated guns. It's a good thing to have in my opinion. I know that's not everyone's opinion, but it is mine. Next up, perhaps a little bit more lighthearted, what about the pub? Everywhere has places to go for alcohol, but pub culture I'd claim as our own. Every town has a number of local pubs. Even if they are mostly chains, chains these days, you are never more than a few minutes from the pub. And this I do agree. I've talked about on this channel before about the element of pubs as part of British culture. Now there are Fewer pubs, they're definitely shutting down. And unfortunately, I think the last few years has definitely accelerated that, which is really unfortunate. So a lot of towns nowadays do have a pub or multiple pubs. A lot of them are chains, which kind of sucks. But the culture around the pub, I think is very interesting, especially the independent pubs, the pubs that are in these gorgeous old buildings and there's like wooden beams on the ceiling and there's leather chairs and there's a big fireplace. Like I absolutely love it. It is so soothing. It feels so British to me and it's something that I think is quite special. What do you get in Canada and even in America? Well, we do have British pubs, but they're like a novelty thing, right? So you, you don't go to, to the pub necessarily. Um, you may go to a British pub as like, you know, a novelty thing, or you're going to the bar. Like if you're gonna meet friends, you're gonna go out drinking, you're most likely gonna be at a bar. We also have some of these weird things called sports bars, which are a little bit different but the community vibe that British pubs have is something that's quite unique, I think, and quite special. Oh my goodness, when I saw this one, honest to God, this is probably one of my favorite things. This is so dramatic for what it is, but here we go. Tax, <laughs> included in goods you purchase at the shops, yes. So if you have ever been to Canada, this is one of the things that I just hate. And honestly, I forgot it existed until I read this and it just like unlocked a core memory. When you buy things at the shop in Canada, the price tag does not include tax. From my limited naive understanding, it's because tax can vary you know, from province to province to territory across Canada. Some of that stuff is provincial, it's different. So rather than putting in the final price, it seems like manufacturers just put the price of the item and then depending where that is sold, the tax is different. I don't know if that's totally true, but to be honest, it kind of sounds true. Either way, it sucks. It honestly truly sucks and I hate it. I remember, you know, going out shopping at the mall with my mom and I'd be holding the things that I want, you know, the new outfits that I want and I'd have to add them up 
And then she'd be like, okay, so then tax on top of that's gonna be roughly this much. So add that to the final cost because you were trying to figure out how much your haul was going to cost before you got to the till. And then you'd have to be like, okay, that's probably a bit too much. So maybe we should get rid of one of these things because the final price of the item is not on the tag. And it's so stupid. And of course here in the UK, the price tag is what you pay. And to be honest, I think Brits who have not experienced anything else, I think you guys take this for granted. Okay, so if you're watching this and you've gotten this far in the video, first of all, thank you so much. Second of all, are you subscribed? It would be wonderful if you could subscribe. Third of all, you need to recognize the privilege <laughs> that you guys have that the price tag is the final price. It's so good. It's, it's just, it's the best. And that concludes my rant about tax. Okay, next up we have another one that I really truly agree with <laughs> and maybe you guys too. So anywhere you want to go is pretty close. At most a day driving, Cornwall to Scotland, for example. Also, we all moan about the roads, but most are in pretty good shape. I've driven in America and I thought I had to get my spine <laughs> reattached. I don't know how much I agree with like the road condition, but I certainly agree with the amount of time it takes to get places. As a Canadian, we have the second largest country by land mass. Now, most people live in only a small percentage of Canada, but it is still massive. And if you wanna go someplace, you wanna explore someplace, you almost have to drive. When I was 16, my parents, I had, I had to start practicing driving because I had to get a license because public transport for most of Canada is just, it's not good enough. Things are too spread out. Things are too hard to reach. You have to drive. And with that, you have to drive real distances. Now, since living in the UK, <laughs> I have taken this for granted. I'll be completely honest because things are close. Now traffic can be bad because the roads, you know, Maybe it weren't designed originally for the amount of cars. That's a separate issue. But things are so close and you can walk places. Like you actually have walkable towns, which is not a thing that you experience in Canada. You can get places on public transport for the most part, um, but things are very close. And I had reverse culture shock when I went back to Canada because I remember my mom was like, we're gonna go to these people's cottage. Um, up north on the lake was absolutely beautiful. And she's like, it's not very far, so we'll go up, um, we'll stay overnight, we'll have the next day and then we'll come home. And I'm like, fine, okay, sure, lovely. Haven't been to a cottage in forever. It's a very Canadian thing, going to someone's cottage. She didn't tell me that it's not very far is four hours. So I have definitely taken this for granted here in the UK that just the, the, the land mass, driving, not taking into account traffic, but it is easy to get places. You have walkable towns. Currently, I don't have a car and I'm okay. Certainly it does limit the amount of places I can get to easily or what times I can get to places but I can get by. In Canada, in, in a lot of towns, especially where I'm from in Ontario, it is just not possible. If you want to take the train, it's about a 45 minute drive to the train station. <laughs> it's, not, it's not happening. It's just not possible. So yes, I absolutely agree with this one. How about that relaxing pigeon sound that kind of goes, do, 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 do. <laughs> this one's great too. You can pretty much go anywhere and look at stuff that's hundreds, sometimes thousands of years old. I love it. And I think this is something else people take for granted. In a previous video, I think it was my um, surprising facts about the UK. And one of them being that Stonehenge is older than the pyramids. And for some reason, I never made that conclusion in my mind. I never made that connection. But Stonehenge is just one of many monuments of many historic places or things that you can just easily see. And it's incredible. One of my favorite places is Rochester down here in the Southeast. There's a castle, <laughs> there's a cathedral, even the high street, the architecture on the high street of some of the shops and the businesses, it's absolutely beautiful. There's history 
everywhere is one of the things. Oh, oh, that was the doorbell. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. What was I saying? That's a good question. History. One of the things that I will always love about living in the UK that I will never get in Canada is the history. This flat, this building, I think was like 300 years old. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what about the sense of humor? Yes. I also agree. Maybe don't look at the name of this person in relation to a good sense of humor. But this person says, public footpaths and really accurate maps telling you where they are. And again, this is wonderful. Now, I don't know if any Canadians watching can educate me a little bit, but the right of way or like the public right of way is not something that I was familiar with. And it was something that was quite surprising to me when I first moved here. And basically there are public footpaths and many of them go over private land, but you have to allow access for people to walk those paths. So I remember going on hikes along a public footpath and you're like walking in someone's backyard or you're walking on somebody's property, but you are allowed that right of way, which is really cool. So even though people maybe buy land or buy property or build a house, most of the time, I think maybe you could take it to court if you wanted to change it, not totally sure. People in the comments can let us know but you allow access for these paths. So you get so many wonderful hiking trails and walking trails that are protected, which is just wonderful. And I'm actually hoping to maybe take you guys out. Maybe we do like a hike this summer. That might be nice. We'll, we'll see, as long as it's not raining. This one is great. No dangerous bugs, which I absolutely agree. And someone else said, very little dangerous wildlife at all, to be honest which I also agree. Now, maybe this is actually a negative that many of the perhaps dangerous wildlife has since been killed off, perhaps. But the UK is certainly not like Australia, certainly not like Canada, where there are predators that may or may not kill you or at the very least hurt you. Here in the UK, I mean, what, a fox? Um, a pheasant, a hedgehog. <laughs> now, of course, living in Canada, living in Ontario, Canada does have some crazy wildlife, but you're pretty much not gonna see it. At most, you'll see like a raccoon trying to get into your rubbish or a deer or birds, you know, like the, the moose and the bears and the wolves and the lynx, all those types of like actual predators, you're not gonna see day-to-day -day life unless you, you know, go up north and you go on, I don't know, expeditions looking for them. They're not in where people live. However, they do exist. Technically they do exist. Whereas here in the UK, you're not gonna have any problem. You're not gonna have any issues with like dangerous bugs. Very little bugs at all, to be honest. Here, um, nobody has screens on their windows because you don't really need them other than the odd fly in the summertime. Oh my God, the flies that get stuck in here. Just the other day, I was about to film and I like I close the windows and I close the doors and I pull the blinds down and stuff so it's not too bright, whatever. And there was a fly stuck in here and I could not get him out. But at the most, that's all you have to deal with. I don't deal with mosquitoes. I don't deal with weird beetles coming in the house or like anything that's pinchy or bitey <laughs> and certainly no dangerous wildlife for better or for worse. It's just not really here. Now this Reddit thread has actually been answered. A post has been picked as the answer. Can you guess what it is? You don't need to guess, I'm about to tell you. How it's got so much crammed into such a small space and pretty much all of it is free to visit. I don't know how anyone can get fed up of living in this country. We don't know how lucky we are. And I absolutely agree. I do get a lot of comments and direct messages and emails from people who um, get very upset when I talk about the negatives about living in the UK. I don't ever wanna sugarcoat it. I don't ever want to be dishonest. There are lots of things about the UK that suck. That's just the reality, that's my personal opinion. That's just what I'm going to say. However, there are so many things that make the UK wonderful that for me personally, the positives far outweigh 
any of the negatives that I talk about. And definitely the fact that we have so much here, we have so much crammed into such a small space, the history, how you can get to places so quickly, that it is safe, that it is wonderful, it's a true, it's a truly a wonderful place. And to be honest, as a foreigner, I feel extremely grateful that I have been given the opportunity to live here. If you would like to watch more content, make sure to check out this video where we go through a different Reddit thread all about the stuff that's overrated about Britain. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.